So what you just witnessed was the magnetic field that a lot of HVAC motors generate when you apply power to the windings. I'm going to take my multimeter. We're going to do a few quick tests on this permanent split capacitor motor here. And those test results are going to go a long way in explaining how these puppies work. So as you see, we have five wires here. We got a blue, a black, a red, a yellow, and a white. Now this white is a neutral. We're dealing with a 120 volt motor here. What I'm gonna do is I have my multimeter set to ohms. That's the horseshoe symbol on here. And I'm going to take one probe. I'm gonna put it on my neutral wire. And I'm gonna take the other probe. And let's start with the red wire. Now this is typically the lowest speed on the motor. And let's see what we're reading. We're reading about just under seven ohms. Now let's go to the yellow wire. You see we're reading just a little bit less, five and a half ohms. Now let's go to the blue. And you're seeing we're reading just a little bit less than that, just a little bit over four ohms. Now let's go to the black wire and that's the highest speed. And you can see we're only reading about two and a half ohms. Now all these wires are connected to the same winding. They're all connected to the run winding. So why are we getting different readings if they're all connected to the same winding? So here we have our different colored wires here and they're coming into this run winding. Now this run winding doesn't just run around in a circle like this. With these little black pieces in here, what that is is the iron core and they're not individual pieces. This is all one solid piece. Uh, just think of it as slots cut into it. And on each slot, this copper wire wraps around that one slot a bunch of times, right? And then the wire jumps over to the next slot, wraps around that a bunch of times, then the next one, the next one, and so on. So just to give you an example of what I mean here, I have a roll of duct tape. Now let's say that's the iron core. And this black wire here is the copper loops. So the wire comes in, it wraps around a bunch of times, then it jumps over, wraps around a few more times, then it jumps over and wraps around a bunch of times. So each one of these is a loop, even though it's all one wire. Now the reason why we get different speeds when we use different wires is because each one of these wires connects to a different number of loops all the way around here. So our black wire, for example, that connects to all the loops around the entire core. The red wire only connects to about 25% of all these loops around the core. So the more loops we're using, the more powerful magnetic field we can create and the faster the motor will spin. The less loops we use, the weaker the magnetic field and the slower the motor spins. Now, when you go back to our resistance readings, it kind of doesn't make sense because the black wire gave us the least amount of resistance at what, two and a half ohms, I think it was, but it's using the entire coil. It's using all the loops in here. Now you would think with more loops, you're going to have more resistance, but that is not how current flows through coils like this. Think of each one of these little black parts of the magnet here as a coil that is another path for current to flow through. The more paths you have, the less resistance you're going to have. So that's why when we tested for resistance on this black wire, we got a low value. While we used the red wire, it has fewer paths to flow through because we're only using about 25%, and that's why we had a higher resistance reading. Now, if that still doesn't make sense to you, just think of it like this. If you've ever been to a sporting event or a concert, what happens at the end? Everybody piles out into the parking lot and tries to leave at the same time through the few exits that are available, and the parking lot is gridlocked. So that would be like using the red wire on our coil. If we're using a less amount of the coil, there's less pass for the current to flow through, and it's more congested and creates more resistance, like you trying to leave a parking lot with only a few exits available. Now imagine that same parking lot with 500 different exits. This would be like using the black wire. When we're using the entire coil, we're using all the available paths for current to flow through, which will create less resistance. So what we're looking at now is the other side of the coil, and you can see that there's actually two different windings here. It's the start and the run winding. Uh, so you can see right here we have a group of wires and then over here we have another arc of wires and then over here we have another arc of wires here. So you can see that there's two different windings here and they both run through the center of the core in the same way. 
but the start winding has fewer windings to it and it creates its own magnetic field with the help of a capacitor. Now this capacitor creates a very strong magnetic field with an inrush of voltage coming in that opposes the magnetic field on the run winding and this creates the torque we need to get the motor spinning. But once that motor is spinning, there's a centrifugal switch inside these motors that drops out that start winding. So you can actually disconnect a capacitor once the motor is running and it'll continue to spin and I'll prove it to you. So here's our capacitor, here's our motor. I'll turn the power on and as you can see the motor spinning. Now watch what happens when I disconnect the capacitor wire. As you can see the motor continues to spin. Not very quietly but it's still spinning even though I have a wire disconnected from the capacitor. Now if you look on the side here, we have two purple wires that come out and connect to each other and two orange wires that do the same thing. What these wires do is control the rotation of the motor. So right now the way I have it, the motor will spin clockwise. So if I would turn this on, we would see the tape spinning in a clockwise direction. Now if I were to take these two purple wires apart, I take these two orange wires apart and then I put the purple and orange together. Like this, so we have a, one purple and orange going together, another purple and orange going together. What that will do is reverse the rotation and we will have a counterclockwise rotation. So these purple and orange wires are just to control the rotation of the motor.